If you watched my Clash of Champions preview video, you know I wasn't exactly overcome with excitement about this show on Sunday night. Which I guess is part of the reason why I waited until Monday after work to sit down and watch the damn show. This is a whole problem with it. This is what it really comes down to. You give me characters, for the most part, that I really don't care about in stories that don't really interest me, it's really hard for me to get engaged and invested in the matches. I'm sorry. Some people have been able to lower their standards enough over the years to where it just doesn't matter as much to them anymore, and God bless them. For some, they've only come into wrestling over the past few years, so uh, they really don't have an appreciation for what great larger-than-life characters are supposed to be and what great compelling storytelling in wrestling is. So I think this is about as good as it gets. And again, at least they're watching, but I think that was the problem with the show for me as much as anything else. Like, I can't just sit there and crap on it, because that wouldn't be fair to it. Because that would assume that I was invested enough to get angry enough about it to flat out rant about it. My overall feelings about the show, with a couple of notable exceptions, was just kind of, eh, apathy. Just did not really care. Like the opening tag match for the Raw Tag Team Championships. We all knew the score here on this one. It was just a match, no surprise. And what's really weird about it to me was like, they put themselves in this spot with Strowman and Rollins but then really didn't do anything with it. Like, if you're going to do this, where the two guys wrestling for the world title at the pay-per-view are going to win your tag championships, then at least use it as a device to really create some animosity or something, and none of that happened. It was just a match, no surprise, and you've got new random tag champions, yippee ki and most importantly of all, <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! Here, here, here was one. The fuck was that match between Charlotte and Bailey? Would that go maybe four minutes? Now the right person won in the right way. It just what was that? It was quick. Now to be fair, I've been one plenty of times that says not every match needs a lot of time on a car, and I will always stand by that. Having. Differing lengths of matches and different styles of matches and different types of matches, uh, different types of finishes, all makes for a better show. But as I wrote down here in my notes, Charlotte versus Bailey, that was four minutes of what the hell was that? I don't know. The Revival versus The New Day. At least there was a little bit of storytelling element here of Xavier Woods' knee being messed up and they worked it. But The Revival are tag champs and... A couple of years later, as much as everybody used to pump these guys up to me, thinking that I would like them, I look at them and I say, I'm still waiting to figure out what's so special about them. Like, the, the hell was this match? Why was I really supposed to care about this one? I understand what they were going for. And their stupid freaking name. Um, with their alignment with Thornton and New Day's alignment with Kofi, but I, it's a no for me, dog. Women's Tag Team Championship. I mean, you had moments when Alexa and Mandy were supposed to be doing stuff, and it was just really awkward, like really choppy. Um, I don't know why Sonya Deville uh, has to wear the big freaking rainbow flag. You lesbian. You rub clits with a Nazi. Congratulations. Good for you. I don't damn care one way or another. Just, I guess pride is one thing. It's just, ah, who gives a shit? It doesn't matter one way or another. It just doesn't. But this match, yeah, I guess. It's whatever. You're trying to make me like Alexa Bliss, and it's just really not working. And here's the whole grand scheme of things. Like, if I was looking at this match, I would say, if anything, why wouldn't you put Alexa Bliss and Mandy Rose together? I digress. Actually, I could argue one of my favorite matches of the night was the Miz versus Shinsuke Nakamura for the Intercontinental Championship. 
it was easily to me one of Shinsuke's best WWE matches, but to be fair, that's not saying a whole hell of a lot. Um, there's almost a moment there where when Taxi Stan was ringside and he was talking on the mic, I was like, you know what? Him being a hype man for a meaningless mid-card champion feels like a great role for him because he is also meaningless. But then they cut off his mic and I quickly realized, oh yeah, he still sucks. That said, the dynamics of this match, there was a clear-cut babyface, the crowd was really behind the Miz, the crowd really was against Shinsuke, and he had the heater out there in taxi stand. It worked! It worked! So I enjoyed this match, I actually did. Uh, Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch. I like the finish in the sense that they went all over the place. It wasn't a clean cut. One person pinned the other one or made the other person submit or anything like that. But as I'm watching it, like I got hit about five minutes into the match. I'm like, these girls are going to go a long time. They're going to do all this other shit. And I'm kind of like, why even, why even have the match? Like, why not just have them brawl all over the damn place from the very beginning, try to actually get some heat on Sasha Banks, and build up towards an even bigger, more important match at Hell in a Cell? I guess they kind of did that, but here's the problem with this. Because we're starting to get into kind of like Cena-ish territory with Becky a little bit. Like, you couldn't even let Sasha stand tall in the match where there wasn't a clear winner. You do all this other crap, and it's Sasha that's laid out crying and boo-hooing, you know, so to speak, at the end of this. Not Becky Lynch. So now why in the hell would I care to see these two in a few weeks at Hell in a Cell? Sasha did all this stuff and it didn't matter. Becky was su still superior. Story is over. I don't know if this was the company sending a message to Sasha in any way, like, hey, we're not ready to have uh, this program end, but Sasha, you're going to lay down and play like a good girl here. I don't know what the hell it was, but Sasha should have been the one to stand tall. That would have been the much better storytelling element. So, of course, WWE went in the other direction. Randy Orton and Kofi Kingston, I will say this. Is this is closer to the match that they should have had at SummerSlam, which they ultimately did not. But as much as I can say with this, it still has a story that I can understand and relate to and I can get into. I found myself surprisingly not as invested in this one as I maybe thought. And I, and I have to confess and admit at this point in time, where I was totally behind, as you know, Kofi becoming the champion at WrestleMania because of the big moment it was going to be and what it was represent, and at that time I was absolutely correct, I can say now the shelf life on Kofi Kingston being the WWE champion is over. You could even hear it in the crowd. They were kind of booing him a little bit. Now, now mind you, you know, just because you can have a different champion doesn't make that person a better champion. And Randy Orton as a world champion sucks. Especially at this stage of his career. It sucks. It would not necessarily be an improvement over Kofi. It would just be something different over Kofi. But I am totally ready on October 4th if they do the right thing. If you're going to have Kofi lose the belt anytime soon, that's the moment in time. That's the place. That's the show. That's where the hell you do that. Whether that's a Brock Lesnar... Or somebody else, I don't know. But, yeah. The match was cool. But, I'm ready for Kofi's reign to end. I'm sorry, I am. Uh, the real surprise of the night to me was Eric Rowan versus Roman Reigns. It's no disqualification match. No Daniel Bryan interference. But really enjoyed the match. Thought it was a good spotlight for Eric Rowan. Uh, Roman did a good job. Uh, the Luke Harper return was a nice, probably expected, non-surprising surprise. But the way it was done worked, and ultimately, you had Roman Reigns doing the job. For Christ's sakes, in the semi-main event of a pay-per-view, Eric Rowan just pinned Roman Reigns in the middle of the ring, one, two, three. Without a super-duper ton of interference or anything else. Like, there was sensible interference but not to the point where it made Rowan look stupid. You know what I'm saying? 
Now, you could sit there and say, well, if it was going to be no DQ, then now you just have it be three on one on Roman the whole time. And I would say, logically, that makes sense. But I enjoyed this match. I really, really did. I don't know that I would necessarily be having Roman Reigns getting pinned by Eric Rowan, but that's where they went with this. And at least you could say it's because Luke Harper got involved. You could build towards something bigger, carrying it through Hell in the Cell, and potentially two Survivor Series. Okay, I, I, I can fly with that for now, even though the whole premise of this storyline has been so damn stupid. But nothing can be as stupid as the main event of this show, Braun Strowman versus Seth Rollins for the Universal title. Y'all knew where this was going. They just couldn't do it. They just didn't have the guts. The fans were clearly behind Strowman. The fans clearly wanted Strowman. And if you're ever going to do it, you know, this was a chance to do it. You're going to start now getting to where it's too late to do it, and you're going to get a diminishing interest level in Strowman's character very, very quickly. Like, it was just so unnecessary to have to have Rollins hit that many curb stomps to Braun. It's just so clearly trying to set it up. Oh, we're going to make Rollins cool. And you could hear it towards the end of the match. Fans were kind of booing and pissing on it a little bit. They are like, ah, oh, give me an effing break. I talked about this match going into it. It was a no-win situation. Either Braun Strowman wins, and he beats Seth Rollins as opposed to Brock Lesnar, which is stupid. Or you have Seth Rollins win, and it doesn't really give him any cool factor, and it just hurts the Braun Strowman character. Well, that's what they did, and that's exactly what happened. The one true saving grace of this, obviously, was just as you think it's going dark, and you're wondering, well, I thought, thought maybe The Fiend was going to show up. The Fiend did show up. And he took out Seth Rollins. I mean, the crowd was obviously really into it. It was cool. It looked cool. I'm not trying to overanalyze the Fiend stuff right now. I enjoy it, so I'm actually trying to enjoy it, believe it or not. The only thing I might have floated out there is if you wanted to do something a little different, why not have the Fiend attack during the match and potentially take out both of them? Set up a triple threat of Hell in a Cell. Sell it that he wants both of them there so because he, he wants to inflict pain on both of them. Why not? It, it just, there's a part of me that worries that they're rushing it too quickly with The Fiend. He's interesting. He's one of your most over characters at the moment. Does not mean automatically you have to put the world title on him what this, right this second. Now, I could say ABS, anybody but Seth. And The Fiend being anybody but Seth fits into that category. Um, and I would be happy to see him as a world champion. But, like, I, I just, I don't know that I want to saddle him with the world title yet. Like, he'd probably do bigger and better things involving The Fiend that don't involve the universal title. Like, go there. You know, I, I just... There are bigger and better things to do. Like, there's a part of me that when you talk about the whole revenge thing for The Fiend, like, he should be facing Undertaker at Survivor Series and choking him the fuck out. Or hitting Sister Abigail on him and winning. He should be going to WrestleMania 36 and facing John Cena and choking him out with the mandible claw. Like, that's the way this should work. Like, if you want to do a redemption story and you talk about some of the people that he's went after so far... Like, that's how this should work. And I don't know at this point that it necessarily has to involve the title right here, right now. Now, if you had said in a few months that you wanted to put him in a position where he's the obvious choice to win the Royal Rumble, different conversation. But right now, it's either you're going to rush the title on him when maybe you didn't need to, or you're going to have Seth Rollins beat him. And then you just ruin both characters. Even though the Rollins character already is Rowan. Uh, this show, like I said, Rowan and Reigns was really good. Orton and Kingston was better than SummerSlam, but I didn't care as much. Um, Sasha and Becky went a long time. A lot of you probably enjoyed it. Um, I liked the setup of the finish. I did not like the fact that Becky stood tall over Sasha. Um, and Miz and Shitsuke was okay. It was good. And that was about it. I could have done without most of the rest of the show. If you give me characters I don't care about and storylines that are interesting, I'm not going to give a crap about your wrestling matches. 
That's just the way it is. That's why I'm an angry wrestling man, and that's why OTR Essential is not the wrestling show you want. Just the wrestling show you need. Let me know what you thought of Clash of Champions in the comments.